Okay, so real quickly, I'm using the Red Heart Super Saver yarn. This is a four weight. This is a soft white color. And there are multicolors that you can use. Um, or you can use stripes. You can do a couple rows in one color and a couple rows in a different color if you want a striped look. I'm using contrasting colored yarn for um, stitch markers and also the regular stitch markers. You can use a paper clip if you want. I'm using a tapestry needle or a wide eye needle for weaving in the ends and my scissors. And for this project, you will need a size I. I'll try to zoom in. This is a size I or size nine, also a 5.50 millimeter crochet hook. Also, you can use a multicolored yarn and there's a variety of colors for that. Red Heart also has a reflective yarn, which works great under light. If your dog is outside at night, you can see how it reflects in the picture, and that would help you see your animal at night. All right, to begin, you want to go ahead and leave yourself six inches or so for a tail. Do your slip knot. Just bring that over. And then bring the back piece over your finger and slip your hook in. Now I want you to go ahead and chain six. Okay, there's one, two, three, four, five, and six. So you can count these again, one, two, three, four, five, six. This one here is your slip knot, that's not a chain. Now you're going to go into the second chain from your hook, which is going to be this one right here, and we're going to single crochet our way back. This should end up being the uh, front side of your project, and you can always remember that by your tail being on the left side once you finish this collar part. Okay, so let's do our single crochet. Go into the chain, pick up your yarn, pick up the yarn, go through two, and go all the way back. Here's your second one. And your third. Fourth. And your fifth. So we have six, I'm sorry, five single crochets. Okay, and then you want to turn your work. And you're going to chain one. And now we're going to do single crochets coming back. It'll be five single crochets coming back. So you go into the back loop of that single crochet of the previous row, so the back loop only, and go ahead and do your five single crochets. That's one. You want to hold it just right. Two. and four and five okay turn your work again chain one and again into the back loop only and you're going to do 29 rows. So I want you to continue on. And I will meet you at the end after you do 29 rows. And we'll continue from there. And instead of having to write down each row that you do so that you know you've got 29, the easy way to count these is this is your first row and then the ridge is your second. 
So just count by twos, two, four, six, eight. And that would be my ninth one. So that's how you count. So there's your 29 rows, and this is going to be the collar for the dog. And we'll continue from here. Okay, so now that we have finished our 29th row, we're going to single crochet across the top here. We don't have even stitches like we have had before, so we're going to have to just judge. So you've got your low row, your high row. So you're going to do a single crochet in your low row, single crochet in your high row, and you're just going to continue on, and you should end up with 29. Now, if you do stitch tight, you might have a problem like I do, getting the hook in there, and sometimes you have to use the point of your hook to get into the stitch. But first you want to chain one, and then you're going to go into the low row, and you can either go right under here, or you can try to catch two, which is what I'm going to do. I'm going to go right in there, and you seem like I'm having a little bit of difficulty, but I'm going to go right into that gap right there, and I'm going to go ahead and do my single crochet. And then I'm going to go into my high row. I'm going to try to catch two loops. I prefer to do that if I can. Again, I'm going to use the point of my crochet hook. It uh, looks like I only, may have only grabbed one, but we're going to work with that. Okay, do my single crochet. Go into the low row, and I'm going to go right in here for my low row. Okay, and now this is my high row. Again, I'm going to try to grab at least two stitches. And just keep doing that across. Here's my low row. And here's my high row. Just try to do it as uniform as you can. And continue on until you have 29 stitches. Now, you can go ahead and put a stitch marker in here if you'd like. You know that is your first single crochet. So I've got the 29, and you want to turn your work. Now we're going to go back the other way. We're going to do something slightly different. Uh, and if you want to, you can put a stitch marker um, at either end. So we're going to chain one, and now we're going to do a single crochet right in here in this first single crochet that we just finished. And in the next one, we're going to do two single crochets. So here's one, and then two, And then you're going to go into the next one and you're just going to do one single crochet and the next one you do two and do that all the way down to the end and i'll meet you at the end and as you can see this is starting to cause it to turn this is going to be the neck for the dog and this is going to be the body so we're going to be we're, we're continuing to work the, out this way and now you should have 43 single crochets if you don't you need to go back and find out where you made your mistake so now we're going to turn our work and we're going to chain one And then we're going to go right into that second chain from the hook and we're going to do a single crochet and we're going to continue doing single crochets all the way across this is our third row 
I did, did put a stitch marker here. That was the second row. And you're going to do this uh, single crochet all the way to the end. And then you're going to come back and do it two more times. Okay, so I will meet you after you've done three more rows of single crochet. Okay, so now that we have your last row done, what we're going to do now is do the leg openings. And we're going to go ahead and turn our work just as if we were going to start another row, like so. And But this time what we're going to do is we're going to count. We're going to use our stitch markers and I'm using contrasting pieces of yarn. I've got four of them here. And what you're going to do is count. Pull that yarn out. You're going to count five of the single crochets one two three four five and you're going to put your hook right into the fifth one one two three four five and you're going to take that stitch marker just bend it in half put it on your hook and bring it through wrap it around and bring it through just like so and then you're going to count four spaces. So that's going to be one, two, three, four. And we're going to do the same thing again. And this will make, I'm using these stitch markers because it'll be easier as you're stitching along and you can just go right into that hole there where your stitch marker is. So you have three in between. And we're just going to go to the other end. We're going to do the same thing. I'm going to count one, two, three, four, five. Put your hook in. Grab your yarn. And pull it through. And pull it through. Okay, and then you're going to count one, two, three, four. You can also count the holes one, two, three, four. All right, just making sure that you have that three in between. Okay. So there you have it, and these are going to be where the arms are going to be made. So, okay, so now what we're going to do is put your hook right back in to the loop here, and we're going to single crochet. First, we're going to chain one, and we're going to single crochet five times and up to and including where the stitch marker is. And we're going to do 10 rows of this. So that's four. And here's five. Just go right in to where your stitch marker is and do your fifth one. Okay, now what I like to do is mark this. This is my first row. I'm putting this little stitch marker in there. And you can also take a notepad and just mark each time you do a row if you'd rather do that. So all you want to do is turn your work, chain one, and come back the other way. And you're just going to continue to do this until you have a total of 10 rows. This is my second row. Okay, and you see how it's a little bit harder to get that uh, 
in there with the stitch marker in there. That's why it's kind of good to use contrasting pieces of yarn. Okay, turn the work again, go back the other way. Always remember to chain one first and do your five across. This is my third row. Now sometimes you can see, you can tell by just counting your rows, it might look obvious to you. If not, go ahead and just write it down on a notepad and then you know exactly where you are. Okay, so we've done three rows so far. So that's our one, and that's two, and that's three. And I'll meet you back. All right, so go ahead and do your slip knot. Oops. Okay. And I like to keep it on the finger and just go ahead and put your hook right into that space where the green marker is. Slip this on, tighten it up, okay. and just bring it right through here. Chain one and take the tail and just hold it against the back here as you're stitching. Okay, and we're going to go into here and just do our single crochets. We're just going to grab that tail as we go along. Okay, do it. And just do this all the way across. I'm going to go ahead and keep your keep count of your rows. So we just do this all the way across. And you will, I'll meet you right here just to make sure that we're on the same page. Okay. Okay, so I've just got a few more to go. And you want to go ahead and include the stitch marker as a stitch. Go right in there, turn your work, chain one, go right back into there, and this will be your second row. Make sure that you're marking them. You're going to do ten of these. So. I'll meet you at the end, and what this is going to do, this is going to be long, and this is going to be the gap right here for your legs. Okay, so now we have finished our center section, and you want to do the same thing again. You want to uh, cut it and pull it through. Going to Chain one and pull it through. Okay, now we've got one more section left and you'll notice that we do have it ending on this side here. So what we've got to do now, we have to turn it and it's important that you do this so that the pattern will look the same. So we're going to start here. Okay, so we want to start our slip knot And just, whoops. Okay. And go ahead and put it in right here. Put it on the slip knot. Tighten it up. Go ahead and bring that through. Chain one. And do your single crochet. You're going to do the same thing again. You're going to single crochet all the way across to the end, chain one, and come back, and you're going to do 10 rows. 
All right, so carry on and I will meet you at the end of the 10th row. Okay, so I've finished my 10 rows here. And again, as you notice, each row ends at the same point and that's very important. So go ahead and cut this off. And just pull that through and tighten it up. Now you're going to turn the whole work over this way. And we're going to start on this side. My stragglers are a little bit too long. Okay. And we're going to go ahead and make our slip knot. Okay. And you're going to go ahead and slip it in. And right at this point right here, put it in there, tighten it up, and bring that through. Do a chain one, and I want you to start single crocheting across. And what we're going to do is <clears throat> we're going to single crochet across the five, then we're going to have to chain three to match the three at the bottom, and then connect by single crocheting with the top here. So let me go ahead and show you what I'm talking about. So we'll go ahead and get all the way over. Maybe. Okay. Now you want to chain three. One, two, and three. And then you're just going to go and connect it to the top over here. And just go into that first single crochet. And you can catch this if you want. I didn't catch that on the other end. And just start single crocheting across. all the way and you're just going to continue all the way across and when you get to this point over here you're going to chain three connect it here with your single crochet and then single crochet and I'll meet you here at the end or I may meet you here Okay, so now we're going to chain our three again and get to the other side. One, two, and three. And then we just grab this other section, go right into that first single crochet. And again, you can work in your, your tail as you're doing this right here. So you wanna just go Hold it in place and do your single crochets all the way across. When we get to the end, we are not going to cut the yarn. What we're going to do is turn our work and then we're going to chain one and then we're going to single all the way across, single crochet all the way across. And the row after that will be starting to decrease okay so there's your first row and now you're going to flip your work around now you can go ahead and take these um, stitch markers out if you want and I'm going to go ahead and put a stitch marker in right here just so I know that this is my first row first I'm going to chain one and I'm going to start my single crochets across Okay, and just go all the way across to the end. I'm going to meet you at the end, but first what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this out. I'm just going to use this one. OK, 
okay? And I'm just gonna put it in here. So when we start to count the, count the rows, you'll know that this is your first row right here. Okay, so just put it in there like so. All right, so carry on, continue all the way across. And when you get to here, you're just going to go into the chain and you're just going to do your single crochet. And I'm gonna show you what that looks like. Just so you'll know, so I've got a couple more here. Okay, so you just want to go into your chain go ahead and turn it like that where you can see the V shape so this will be one and two and three And then you just carry on going in here. You know, you wanna have the two pieces of thread of yarn. Okay, and so carry on all the way across. Okay. Okay, so now that we have finished our second row here, we're going to turn our work and we're going to chain one. We're going to start decreasing and you want to chain one and you're going to single crochet two together. So you go in here, bring it back. You have two loops on the hook, go into the next stitch, bring it back. You have three on the loop and then you just sing do them together and then you continue doing your single crochets all the way across and then we, when we get down to the end we're going to single crochet two together right down here and then as we turn our work and go back we're going to do, be doing single crochets all the way so every other row is going to be this to decrease and I'll meet you down at the end Okay, so now that we've gotten down to the end, the last two stitches, you want to go in, pull up your yarn, bring it through, go into the last stitch, which always seems to be the hardest one to do. Pull up the yarn, bring it through, and go through all three. Okay, so this is the first row that we did a decrease in, and we're going to do every other row. So the next row is going to be a single crochet all the way across. Then the next show, next row we're going to decrease just like we did here. So we want to have a total of 13 rows that we did a decrease and 13 rows of a single crochet. So now you want to turn your work and just do a chain one right here. Okay, now we're going to just do our single crochets all the way across on this particular row. So continue doing that. When you get to the end, you're going to want to turn your work, do a chain one, and then you'll do your decrease at the beginning and your decrease at the end. And again, continue on until you have 13 rows with the decrease and 13 rows with the regular single crochet. And I'll meet you at the end. Okay, now we have finished our 26 rows. That was 13 decrease rows and 13 regular single crochet rows. And you just want to cut your yarn and put your hook back in, loop the yarn over and pull it through and tighten it up. 
and we're going to work on the leg openings and we're also going to connect the sweater together at the bottom chest area right here. Okay, now we're going to do single crochets around the leg opening. And another way to go ahead and attach your yarn is without doing a slip knot, just loop it over and bring it back through where you're going to start doing your single crochet. And I'm just starting in the corner of the leg op opening and go ahead and start doing your single crochet. And you might want to start at the corner leg opening closer to the side where you're going to stitch at the belly. But all in all, it probably doesn't matter. So you see we don't have stitches here. You kind of have to ad lib, so to speak. We don't have exact stitches and I always try to get under two pieces of yarn for a sturdier stitch and you just want to keep going around now I'm come, coming around to a corner again and you can also weave in your ends as you're stitching around Once you get this first round of single crochet, it'll be easier to see the stitches when you do the next row. And there's not that many rows that you have to make for the leg openings. So they will work up very quickly. Now we're going to chain one, and now we're going to do a single crochet in that same spot. And now we're going to start decreasing. So we're going to go into that first stitch and pull the loop, pull the yarn through go into the next stitch and pull the yarn through and then go through all three the next one we are just going to do a single crochet just like normal and then we're going to do your decrease in the next two so you pull up the loop go into the next one pull up the loop and go through all three. The next one, you just do a regular single crochet. So you do this every other one. Now we're going to decrease. And continue that all the way around. Do a decrease, do a regular single crochet, and a decrease, and I will meet you at the end. So as I come around, I thought I was going to have two stitches left to do my decrease stitch at the end, and I don't. I just did a single crochet, and I'm going to go ahead and just do another single crochet in that last stitch before I connect with a slip stitch. And you can do the same thing if this happens to you as well. So there's my single crochet. And now I'm going to slip stitch to the beginning, which is this one here. So I'm just going to go in, pull up the yarn, and just bring it through the loop on the hook. And now I'm going to chain one, and now I'm going to do a single crochet in that same spot. Okay, so our previous row, which was round two, was a decrease row. So this is going to be a single crochet row all the way around. So we're going to do that, 
So that'll be round three as a single crochet all the way around. Round four will be a decrease row. Round five will be another single crochet around. So I will meet you at the end of round five. Okay, so now we have finished our fifth row, which is all single crochets coming around. We are going to finish this sleeve off with an edging called reverse single crochet. So I've come to the end, I've come to my corner, and what I'm going to do is go into my last stitch here and go ahead and do a slip stitch chain one and now we're going to do a single crochet but instead of going to the left we're going to go to the right and this feels a little awkward at first if you've never done it before but it makes a, a nice thick edging so we're going to do our single crochet. So we're going to go into this stitch here, which is right next to it. And we're going to go in underneath, if I can get in there, underneath those two strands, pull up the yarn, bring it back through. You have your two loops on the hook, pull up the yarn and bring it through. And you're not going to see much of an edging until I get about four of these done. So let's go into the next stitch right here. And we're going to go underneath the two strands, pull up your thread, and pull up the thread and go through. Go to the next stitch, go under the two strands. Pull up your yarn, come back through, and go through two. Let's do one, another one. Oops, sorry about that. Go into the next one, pull up the yarn, and go through two. So you can start to see the edging here. I'm going to do a couple more. Go under the next stitch and one more stitch coming around and what I'm going to have you do is do the other arm just like we did this one so if you need to rewind and go back and see how we did it you'll do the same thing on the other arm okay so you see how this is looking all right, so you see that the arm is not very big. I'm going to meet you when I get down to the end to show you how to finish this now off. That we finished our edge. Just go in and do a slip stitch in your in your last stitch. And I'm going to I've got to do one more here. And then I'm going to go into this last stitch and pull it through and this is my slip stitch it's hard to work backwards okay now you just want to cut it pull your yarn through Okay, you can go ahead and weave in that, that end. You see that the, the sleeve is not very big. And we started here at the bottom. This is um, on the side of where this is going to be in the bottom. So it's probably better to go ahead and start. So if there's any kind of discrepancy, you won't see it. So now we're going to do the next sleeve and just do the same thing. And again, we start at the bottom on that side. So let's start on the bottom here and go ahead and just work your way around just like we did on the other sleeve. And I'll meet you when we're done with that one.
So now that we have finished both sleeves, we're going to turn it to the sleeves that are on the inside and we are going to take a darning needle and we're going to sew this together. I have not weaved in my ends. I would suggest that you do that. I just wanted to try to finish this up as uh, quickly as I can before my company comes. And this is the sweater that's done, as you can see. So we're doing this on the inside, so that doesn't show. So this is where we're gonna do it. And you see we come out um, a couple of rows, just a couple of rows down where we start this. And this is so you don't see See, that seam looks more like that on the bottom, okay? And again, we're only going a couple of rows down the sleeve where we stitch it together. So, I'm going to take um, another piece of thread of yarn and make sure that's there. And this one is about, about right here. And this is where we're gonna start, okay? two foot long piece of yarn and it's going to be a little bit hard to put it through the needle the eye of the needle here let's see if I can do it oh, I got it in okay all right another thing that you can do is at, you know at the end you want to go ahead and do a slip knot On the, on the very end and now we're going to make sure that this matches up here and we've got it down here and we're going to go about right there make sure it's matched up and just go under and bring your yarn through and when you get to the slip knot and just put your needle through there and just pull nice and tight and there you got it and you just want to go all the way along just keep going and just want to make sure that it's nice and snug Keep going all the way to the end and I'll meet you down here. We'll finish off. Okay, so I'm down to my last stitch here. One or two stitches more. Had a straggler in the way there. Okay, let's do maybe two more here. And again, this was two feet, about two feet long piece of yarn is what I used. Okay. And now when you get to the end, you know what, I don't like that. I want to do one more. Okay, so now I'm just going to turn it this way to make it easier for me. And... You just want to take your needle and just go in about, oh, I don't know, an inch or so. It's a little tight there. And you just want to push it through 
We're going to go do this three times all together to make it nice and snug. Okay. I'm just going to go back in this way. And this shouldn't show up on the other side. And then one more time. Let's just, you don't want to sew the other end together there. And just come down on the opposite side. Or the, the same side you were on, but just try to get under there. Okay. All right, and then that way, when you cut it, some scissors here somewhere. Yeah, I can just go ahead and cut it right there. Now these other ends I'm going to weave in, but now for our very last part is going to be to do this edging right here. So we're going to do an edging um, similar to the legs. So there's that. I'm going to turn it back inside out just to show you what this looks like. Come on out of there. See? And there's the bottom part. All right. So that's not going to show. That's going to be on their chest. All right, so now we're going to do um, an edging right here. Okay, uh, inside out. Just in case you don't know how to finish off these seams, I'm going to go ahead and try this wide eye needle. Okay, so this this one here is pretty easy. This one's right on the edge. And remember, this is the wrong side. So we want to go ahead and just kind of go under here. See, that is kind of wide there, so it's having a hard time going through. That's why I was using the silver needle instead. which I may go back to. Okay, and then you can just go back another way over here. Again, I'm not left-handed, so this does not do well for me. Let's just go here. What else I'm going to do? I'm going to grab that right there and I'm just going to go down this way a little bit. Okay. Just a little bit. There we go. Okay. So you've got that done. So just, just find a spot and, and just weave it in. Do that with the rest of your stragglers. Okay, that one's pretty short. I'm going to use the silver needle on that one. All right, now somehow I have lost the section where I was showing you how to do the reverse single crochet edging for this, for the bottom. So what you want to do is you want to do it just like you did for the openings for the legs and just go ahead and attach your yarn at this point here in the center and do your chain one and then start doing your single crochets starting um, right here and going to the right and just follow all the way around 
and I will show you how to finish off. So I've come all the way around, you've got your edge in here, and I just did a slip stitch to the first stitch there, and you'll just want to take your scissors and, and just go ahead and cut that. Pull that out, tighten it up, and then just weave in your end, and you're good to go. And there you have it. A fun little doggy sweater. There you go. Sorry, I don't have a little doggy to put it on. My neighbor's out of town or I would have used her little doggy. Ta-da! Thanks so much for watching. Please hit the thumbs up and subscribe. If you enjoyed making this doggy sweater, I will make future projects. And please comment on what you would like to see me make in the future, and I will certainly try to make that for you. Thanks again.